Hey everyone, let's go cook with Tyga. A little Cajunuti. That's what I'm doing today. I'm wanting to share a recipe with you. It's a pork stew. Um, I'm gonna start with the roux. I got my ingredients here. I'm gonna start with the roux. And then I'm gonna put the onions and uh, bell peppers in that brown to smother down with that roux. And add the pork. I've got my potatoes already cut better because you don't have all the preservatives. So I've got that. So let's get started. How do you start a stew? I'm going to turn the fire on high for now. I'm cooking in an iron pot. And we, uh, how do you make a roux? Well, it's equal parts oil and flour. Equal parts, let's see. Usually it's one cooking spoon. Hmm, I don't know. I'm gonna do two, two cooking spoons. Yeah, that looks right. Got another spoon just like that one. I'm gonna add two cooking spoons. Let's see, just a little bit heaping, I think. Let me stir that up and see if that's good because you want it to be thick, okay? So, and I know you can take a shortcut. I think you can buy roux in a jar in the, in the store, but I like to make it from scratch. And see, I don't have enough oil in it. And don't be afraid of the um, of too much oil because you can always skim the oil off after you finish cooking the stew. So don't be afraid to do something like that. I mean, if I got too much oil in it, I'm just gonna skim it off. But you want it to be um, a nice consistency to go ahead and start browning your roux, okay? I wish I knew what to do to have that camera where you can actually see everything. I'm gonna lower the fire to a medium because this I'm going to, you have to continue stirring. Once you start with the roux, you have to continue stirring it. You want it to brown evenly. You don't want it to burn. So you have to continue stirring. You have to stir the bottom of the pot. Don't just play like you're stirring. You want to make sure you don't burn this because this, this is a big part of the stew. And making it perfect. Every time you cook it, it may be a little bit different. Maybe you didn't put enough flour. Maybe you had, uh, you know, didn't brown it as long as you did the last one. Maybe that's all kinds, the weather. The temperature in your house, the temperature of the ingredients you're putting in, all of that plays a part when you're cooking. So I'm wanting to share, um, I'm browning my roux now. I've already cut my roast up. I had a pork roast, I guess what you call a pork shoulder roast, because it had the blade in it, the, blo the bone in it. So I cut it all off the bone and I have it ready to go in uh, stew size, like, you know, instead of buying stew meat, I just cut my pork roast up because that's what I felt like eating today. Felt like eating pork stew. So, you brown this uh, roux, it's, and you know, everybody cooks different. When I first started cooking this, I thought I had to brown the onions first then make the roux, but I was wrong. So this time I am going to brown the roux, which I mean, I've learned through the days. My sister taught me how to do this. You know, you brown the roux and I know you can put it on a lower fire. If it's cooked browning too fast for you to keep up, you can lower the fire some more. Um, you can see it's getting brown. 
It's still a little loose, but it's getting brown in there. And, you know, I want to say there's really no wrong way to do this because, you know, if you're making a milk gravy, you know, white gravy, you don't brown it. But you do use the flour and the oil with milk, right? I think that's how you make it. I don't really make white gravy all that much because uh, from the South, being from the South, down the Baya, Cajun country, we brown our roux. So um, there's tricks to every recipe, wherever you're at. I know some people don't brown their onions. We like to brown our onions. So it just all depends on the individual. See, this roux is brown and really good. Prep work out by cutting all my ingredients up first. You know, I don't have a sous chef. I'm the sous chef and the cook. So you get all of that cooked up, all of that cut up, ready to go. Then when you start, because you can't leave this, you can't leave the roux and go chop your onions. You can't leave the roux and go cut your meat or whatever. You have to do it quickly. See now, that is getting nice and brown. Well, I'm going to cook it just a little bit longer because I kind of want to throw the onions in there, but I don't want to get ahead of myself because sometimes, sometimes I, I do it... Um, Although maybe I should do it lighter than whatever because I can show you a secret on how to make it dark if it don't come out dark. <laughs> that's a secret to everything. Okay, that's browning up pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and put my onions in there. Which is going to cool it down some. Don't burn it, Ross. Man, that's some good stuff. I'm going to lower it now so that I don't burn it because I want I want those onions to melt down and it's still going to continue to cook the root. So we want to uh, kind of cool it down. And as you can see, I kept my, I'm going to put the peppers in there too, so they're all melt down. Put the garlic. I put, I left the, the two garlic cloves whole because instead of chopping it up, instead of chopping that up, I'm going to let it cook and mash it. So once it gets cooked in here, I'll just mash the garlic so that way, because uh, I don't have a garlic press. A friend of mine said she was going to get me one. I haven't been to the store to look for something like that. So I have not gotten it. Now, mind you, I have turned the fire down to, I have an electric stove, so I've turned it down to a, let's put it at a three. I should cover it. So that it forms a little bit of condensation inside the pot so that um, my onions can melt. But I think I still have too high a fire. So let me dial it down a notch. But you know, the iron pot stays hot better than. Uh, any other pot, right? Sorry if I'm hurting y'all's ears. I'm going to grab my cover right here. Wow, that's kind of simmering a little bit. Let's see. See, it's going to add some condensation. See to the bottom so that it's not so dry and it's not sticking on everything? So that those onions can uh, melt down some. But it's getting dark. Look. Look how dark that roux is. Dark. It almost looks burnt, but it's not. Okay? 
And of course, you know, I've done some of my cutting. This is when you would take your time to cut some ingredients if you need to. But I am going to use it just to pick my stuff back up. So that way, when I'm done cooking, my kitchen is pretty much clean. Pick up my oil. Come back, stir. See, that condensation, just that little bit of condensation is plenty to allow the moisture uh, to accumulate in the pot so that your onions start to smother down. And like I said, everybody's got their own technique, their own way of cooking. Or somebody cook on a video or in person. Uh, there's always going to be something that you need to adjust as far as that goes. Okay, that is all uh, cooking down though. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pork in there. That'll draw some moisture in there to melt those onions too before I end up adding the water because you're going to want to cook the pork down. See all of that good condensation in there? Yeah, those onions are starting to cook down a little bit because you don't want to brown them. You just want to cook them down. You want to melt them down to get that flavor in there. And like I said, I may be doing this rushing this. I may be doing it a little bit too quick. I don't know. But my kitchen is clearing out right there, right? Okay. Now I've got my pork in there and I'm going to do the same thing because I'm going to cover it. Um, and of course, you know, Tony Sashri. That's my favorite seasoning, Tony Sashri. And this is how I measure. I know it's not exactly a science. That's how much I put. I may add some more later. Now I'm going to stir all of this up. Well, I put all of that stuff right back on my spoon, huh? And we're going to let that cook down some. We're going to cook your meat. It always gives it a better flavor if you kind of brown your meat first before you add the water and everything else that goes to it. So uh, that's my steps. The next step is going to be putting my uh, potatoes and my carrots in. And, ooh, that's going to be good. I've got onions. I've got bell peppers. I even have some little bitty hot peppers that I chopped up. Um, and uh, I've got one onion and just maybe about a half of peppers. Whatever you want, whether it's all bell pepper. I've got bell pepper, banana pepper, and some little bitty, little bitty um, hot peppers in there. Um Whatever you want to put, you put it to your liking. Uh, I've got about two pounds of meat, one large onion, and about that much Tony Sashri, right? See, that's cooking up right there. I might need to turn the fire up just a little bit so we can brown that all up. See, the onions are getting um, translucent where you can see through them. I guess that's how you say it, but uh, they're uh, melting down and all that flavor is gonna be in the pot. It's gonna be in that meal. I'm gonna turn it up to a three and a half, hmm, maybe a four. See, and while I'm doing all of this, the root is still browning with everything else. So you don't want to brown it too dark when you add everything. And it's kind of like that, you know, perfect thing. But I'm going to show you a secret. If it's not brown enough, I'm going to show you what else you can do with it. The potatoes that I had soaking, I'm going to pour those in here with the water. And of course, I'm going to need more water than that. But pour that in there.
See how nice and brown that gravy is? Ooh, that pot's hot. You gotta be careful. And I'm gonna put that bag of carrots. I might need to add more seasoning to adjust for the carrots, the vegetables now. And I really don't need to add, um, I mean, it's like perfectly brown, right? Of course, there's absolutely no seasoning in it. I'm gonna do this one more time to take care of the vegetables. And let me show you my secret. I told you I was gonna show you a secret. If it's not brown enough, you can just use just a little bit of this. Yes, it's called Kitchen Bouquet. Browning and seasoning sauce. You can use this in everything. <laughs> you know, I mean, I really don't need to use it in here, but I'll show you, it, it's dark. See how dark that is? And you can put a little bit at a time to whatever. I mean, I do like it anyway because it's like a salty, adds a little different flavor to it. And it didn't really change the, the, the uh, color of this because I already had it dark. And now this has just got to cook, cook down. Like I said, I turned the fire up and uh, I think I got enough water in there. I mean, I'm, I could put some more in and it hurt it because it's got to come to a boil. And uh, once it comes to a boil, you know, I'll stir it here and there. But that's when everything is going to come together. All of those seasonings are going to uh, marry themselves, like I like to say. You know, a combination of uh, the flavors coming together so that you have an awesome dish. Now, what do you do with this? Uh, of course, we're going to eat this over rice. And, hmm, do I want to make some, um, some, some garlic bread? To go with that? I don't know. I mean, you know, us Cajuns, we have rice and, I mean, the, the stew's made with a the flour. Then you eat it over rice. You got potatoes and carrots in there. But you also got the onions and the bell pepper and the, the peppers um, in there as well. Eat it over rice. Uh, I wouldn't make a potato salad with this because there's potatoes in it. So, uh, I mean, you can do anything. You can have... I don't know. The sky's the limit. Whatever you want to serve with it. I'm just thinking stew and garlic bread. I mean, we eat bread with just about anything. So maybe that's what I'm going to whip up right now. Your pot don't rust. Because it's an iron pot. It's going to rust if moisture stays in it. So lots of times what I do after I finish cooking... I'll, I'll wash it, of course, and then I just dry the outside, and I'll put it on the burner, put the fire on high, and let the, the fire dry the pot out, and then after it cools, I'm going to take put a little oil in it, take a paper towel, wipe it all the way around the pot so everything is good and, and uh, seasoned. And wipe the outside of the, um, wipe the cover, and then I'm ready for next time. Easy to wash, easy to store. Um, iron pot is just awesome. And that's it. Now I just got to let this cook down. Um, you know, the rice that I'm eating it on, if you are ever cooking rice, and you burn your rice, put a piece of bread on top of it, Close it back up. Of course, turn the fire off. And in a little while, you'll, you know, let it sit there for a few minutes. Take the bread out. You can eat the bread if you want, but take the slice of bread out. Serve your rice. Don't scratch the bottom of the pot. And you, your rice will not taste scorched, burnt, anything. 
the bread absorbs that uh, taste. As long as you don't scrape the bottom of the pot, you can have all of the rice on top. You don't have to recook it. Just some little bitty tidbits to help you to cook a more enjoyable meal and uh, to share a little bit of Cajunuity with you. Y'all have an amazing day, and I'll see you on the next video. I don't know what I'll be cooking next, but today it was pork stew. Y'all have an amazing day.